Hi everyone and welcome to our Beaky Distillery. So my name is Kirsty Black and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our very windy location here on the east coast of Scotland but also our field to bottle approach to making gin. The distillery opened in 2014 but long before that there was the farm that surrounds us here now. Although the Stirling family have been farming at Arbiki for four generations, their family farms can be traced back to the 1600s on the west coast of Scotland, so an intuitive understanding of the land and crops is truly in their blood. The farm that surrounds the distillery now grows potatoes, wheat, barley, rye and peas. And we take all of these crops into the distillery to be processed into ultimately vodka, gin and whiskey. The base for it to make gin is typically bought into a distillery. The raw material that it's made out of is normally determined by two main factors. The first one is what uh, crops are available where the distillery that produces it is based. So in Europe that sees us uh, using a lot of cereals, so wheat's a very common material. Then if we look at other parts of the world like North America you'll see a lot more corn because they grow it there and then other areas again things like molasses can be used. The second uh, reason that these are common raw materials is, is that they're full of starch and starch means alcohol. So the more starch you've got in the raw material, the more alcohol yields you'll potentially get. Here at Urbikifo, we went for a slightly different raw material. Everything started for us with the potato. So the potatoes are definitely available for us, but they are not full of starch. Um, to put that in perspective, if we make a wheat-based spirit, we'd only use half a tonne, but for potatoes, we're using over two and a half tonnes to produce the same amount of alcohol. The potatoes we chose to use to make our original spirit are what we now refer to as wonky veg. So these are the sort of potatoes that large supermarket chains wouldn't accept. So they've either got slightly knobbly appearance, maybe some blemishes or damage to the skin. But to us, they still just taste as good and they took as much work to grow. So we really wanted to uh, maximize their potential. So we turned them into our now award-winning vodka and gin. Now we've expanded the raw materials that we use, so we also make a wheat-based spirit and a pea-based spirit. To be able to handle both vegetables, so potatoes and peas, as well as cereals, the distillery has been set up to be very flexible, and in between products we reconfigure the setup. On the other side of the wall we've got our milling, so that we've both got a cereal, so a roller mill and a vegetable mill. The purpose of milling is to break up the raw material, so you're making the much larger surface area, which is allowing access for water and enzyme action to occur. All that process is known as mashing and it happens in these tanks behind me. The one in the corner is only used for single malt whiskey, so we won't talk about that today. It's these two here that are used to make the base spirits. The first one is a cooker. So here we're hitting very specific temperatures, which is different for each raw material. And the goal here is to get the starch out of the cells and broken down into small sugars. This is done using enzymes. Every raw material, as I said, has different temperatures and different starch uh, configurations. So we have to adjust this depending if we're doing potatoes, wheat or peas. The output of this step is a very sweet liquid. So we've extracted the starch and turned it into sugars. From there, it goes all down into our fermentation. So in fermentation, yeast is eating at the sugars. So starch is far too big a molecule for yeast to consume. That's why we have to perform this mashing step. But it eats small sugars and turns them into ethanol, which is obviously what we're going for here, and carbon dioxide, which isn't such an interest to us as a distillery, but it is what makes your beer fizzy. So still very useful in beverage alcohol production. At the moment, we have um, six fermenters and we fill one a day. Um, depending on what we're processing, as I said earlier, if it's peas or wheat, we're in the range of 500 kilos per mash and we do three mashes a day. Whereas it's potatoes, we're over two and a half tons per mash and we do two a day. When making the base spirit for a gin and vodka, our goal is a little different than when people are making other types of spirit. We're looking to minimize flavor. 
So that can be from starting in the yeast. So in fermentation, we pick a yeast that produces less flavor compounds. And then obviously that's carried through to our distillation equipment. So all our base spirits go through, um, first of all, this still here behind me, which is our wash still. So the goal here is purely to concentrate at the alcohol. We're not doing any flavor splitting or removal. Every drop of alcohol that goes in there, we distill it off and collect it as something known as low wines. We then go and take the low wines and put them into our next still. So this is where our column still comes in. We do a batch distillation process. So we've got a pot, a traditional copper pot still, which holds 2,400 litres, but adjoined to that is our rectification column. So it's got 40 plates and two partial condensers, and as the vapour travels up through these plates, and each one that goes through, the temperatures are changing, so the alcohol concentration is getting stronger, and more and more flavour compounds are getting left behind. Um, ultimately, the spirit that comes out at the end is 96% minimum alcoholic strength. So as it's a batch process, we still take a head, a heart and a tails cap based on flavour, but the heart is always the purest part section of the distillation and above 96% alcohol. Depending on the raw material we have used, this process might end here. We have made uh, the legal definition of neutral spirit based on the alcohol strength. However, when we're using potatoes, we have to go on and do an extra distillation step. This is using a still that we call our demethylizer. So this is because potatoes and many other raw materials have pectin in them and pectin can turn into methanol during the distillery processes. So this, this, the very methanol and ethanol are very similar chemically. So we need a special still to be able to split them. So the heart section from the column still goes into our demethylizer. And here um, we collect a high methanol cut and our final low reduced methanol cut of the spirit. From here, the spirit from either case goes on and rests in our tanks for a while before we go on ahead and make them into vodka and gin. As mentioned, we process potatoes, wheat and peas in the distillery. For each of these, um, we've developed into a gin. And when we pick our botanicals, we really treat uh, the base spirit as a botanical as well. So each one of those brings different flavours and new mouthfeels and nuances to our final spirits. So for potato, uh, we have our Tati Bogle potato vodka and Kirsty's gin. For the wheat, we have Har vodka and Axe gin. And for the peas, we've turned them into our new product range, which is called Nadar. So this is a bottle of Nadar gin here. So Nadar is garlic for nature. And this is because this product um, is climate positive along with its vodka partner. Sustainability is really at the heart of everything we do at Arbiki. It's very important to us. Since day one, being a farm-based distillery, we're very in tune with our environment and the soils and the climate. And that's just grown from there. This product was developed with the James Hutton Institute and Aberdeen University and is climate positive. So each bottle saves 1.54 kilograms of CO2 equivalent units as a result of using peas. So peas are different from most plants. They don't need nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, nitrogen fertilizer use has a lot of uh, negative impacts associated with it. So by um, growing peas, which are able to obtain their nitrogen from the air rather than synthetic fertilizer, we avoid those emissions. And secondly, the co-products when you make base materials, which are known as things like pot ale, spent grain, and spent wash. When you use peas, they become more enriched in protein and are very good animal feed. So by, um, we use our pot ale on our, our land and surrounding uh, farms to feed animals. And as a result of that, they can avoid and reduce the amount of imported soy they have to use in feeding their animals. So yeah, this is our latest releases, which we're very proud of at Arbiki and hope to continue down focusing on sustainability and releasing climate positive spirits. Now that we've got our base spirit, the next thing we need to make gin is obviously botanicals. And again, we try as much as possible to take a field to bottle approach. This is a long-term plan for us. Um, since we opened the distillery in 2014, each year we've been planting juniper plants out on the fields of our estate. There's just a small handful of plants here um, as demonstration and examples to people of what they look like. Um, within here for as well, we have the opportunity of growing more exotic botanicals that we didn't normally do so well in our Scottish climate. So round about me, we've got the, really the traditional classic gin botanicals. Out of shot, we've got various beds of angelica, 
in the foreground here, this is the iris that you get orris root from. And then behind me, we have licorice. And just coming through, it's a bit early in the year, is coriander. In addition to that, uh, we grow chilies in here for our chili vodka. And also, um, we grow lemongrass for nadarjan. And we have a lot of citrus trees that we bring in here. It's still a bit cold for them at the moment. Uh, there's very cold temperatures at night. So they're stored in a warm location now but they again are used in our Nadar gin. In addition to botanicals we use this space to grow crops for us as employees of the distillery and the farm so we grow lots of tomatoes and vegetables which ultimately also go into making Bloody Marys with our chili and potato vodka. I hope you enjoyed seeing inside our distillery and learning a little bit more about our field to bottle ethos. Unfortunately, we can't be open for visitors at the moment, but hopefully in the near future, we'll be able to welcome some of you inside to see it in person. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Thanks to the Gin Guild for arranging all of this and hope you enjoy the rest of this year's virtual gin -posium. Thank mm -hmm. you.